This video demonstrates four techniques used by builders and project managers to take control of programs and deliver construction projects on time, every time. The topics covered are critical path analysis will illustrate how easily the critical path jumps around as the project evolves. Understanding this is key so you know what activities to manage closely and avoid delay. We'll highlight opportunities to fast track the program. This means partly overlapping activities so they occur concurrently and shorten the overall duration. We'll apply contingency to account for rain events using real weather data. Then to wrap up, we'll look at five causes for delay and assess whether there is an entitlement to an extension of time or not. Thanks for tuning in to Design Construct, where we deep dive into topics spanning design, planning and construction, helping you plan for your next build and set up for success. For the purpose of this video, I've prepared a simple program of 46 weeks, which is a realistic duration for an average size detached house of say 230 square meters with standard inclusions. I've scheduled major activities, earthworks, footings and slab, structural frame and so on. Then I've applied a simple finish to start links for all these activities. So on to our first topic, a critical path analysis. I'm using Microsoft Project, which will automatically map and highlight the critical path for you. Now to illustrate how this path jumps around, let's extend glazing supply from eight weeks to 10 weeks, which has now automatically become highlighted and the overall project is longer as a result. To mitigate this risk, we should add additional flow and that should be factored into ordering this gear two weeks earlier. Equipment and PC items also delay projects because some parts are needed during the services rough-in. As a general rule, ordering and supplying the physical equipment early will mitigate program risk dramatically. Roughing in is a term used when services subcontractors install cables, conduit and pipe work in the walls and the floors before they become concealed. A concealed cistern is a good example, where the main cistern is installed during rough-in, then the flush plate installed later during fit-off. Mixers for taps, mechanical equipment are other examples where kit is installed early. Milestone dates should be scheduled in the Gantt chart as a reminder to place orders well in advance of needing the gear on site. On to our second topic of fast tracking. Let's use joinery as our example. Now without fast tracking, the joiner would wait until all the internal linings had been installed, then arrive on site, measure up and start manufacturing the joinery. Fast tracking this process would see linings to bathrooms, kitchens and the robe nooks installed first before advancing to any other area in the house. This would allow the joinery to be measured sooner, perhaps saving two weeks. This brings us to contingency or float, the third topic of this video. Builders typically have some contingency included in their contract program to cover themselves for unforeseen circumstances. Contingency may be represented as a single line or it may be built into the duration of each activity hidden. Either method is fine. What's important is that a realistic forecast of the completion date is provided by the builder and captured in the contract. In addition to builder's contingency, it's good practice for the owner to anticipate some delay to the completion date. This might be for weather and other unforeseen circumstances. In this example, I've scheduled six weeks of project contingency, which is about 12% of an 11 month program. In terms of rainfall and how much to expect, builders and project managers often use the Bureau of Meteorology known as the BOM in Australia. So searching weather stations in Sydney, I've selected a station near my site. Under statistics, all available data, and scrolling down to the rainfall section, this station actually has 30 years of data summarized. The bomb records the average number of days where rainfall exceeded one millimeter and also when it exceeds 10 millimeters for a given month and for the entire year. A 10 millimeter rain event in 24 hours is considered a pretty heavy storm and may require a day or two for the site to recover and dry out. This data is telling us that three weeks in the year received at least 10 millimeters in a 24 hour period. Now for events of at least one millimeter, there are 68 days or 10 weeks. Using these statistics as bookends and based on experience, we can predict how much delay to expect due to rain for a given location. For Western Sydney, we will nominate six weeks of rain delay, about midway between three and 10, which is about 12%. Now onto the final part of this video, we will assess five delay scenarios. Let's consider rain during the earthworks. There are two main tests to be applied. Does the delay impact critical path, which it clearly does? Is the cause of the delay a qualifying cause of delay? In this instance, inclement weather is a qualifying cause of delay. Most standard form contracts are drafted this way. Therefore, the builder would be entitled to an extension of time. So for scenario two, is a delay from a piling rig breaking down during foundations? Does it impact the critical path? Yes, it does. Is it a qualifying cause for delay? 
No, it isn't. It is an unfortunate event. However, the builder would need to get the rig fixed quickly or hire another one. Therefore, no entitlement for an extension of time. Now, if it started to rain while the rig was broken down, this is known as a concurrent delay and the builder would still not be entitled to an extension of time. Scenario three relates to rain or extreme heat during roofing works. Does it impact the critical path? Yes, it does. Is it a qualifying cause? Yes, it is. So in this example, the builder would be entitled to an EOT as working at heights in the rain should be avoided as it is dangerous and a high risk activity. Scenario four is rain during external works. As we have just discussed, rain is a qualifying cause for delay. However, even though the external works would be delayed, the works are not on the critical path and therefore no extension of time is warranted. The fifth and the final scenario relates to a material fixture or equipment being unavailable. Let's say the specified kitchen sink was discontinued or not in stock and the alternate sink needed to be selected. This is actually activating the variation clause. The contract sum would be adjusted if required to account for the different price and the builder would be entitled to evaluate any impacts to the program. There you have it folks. Thanks for tuning into Design Construct. Please hit the like and the subscribe button and we'll see you at the next video.